Well hello and welcome, you're watching Gmodism, this is Insatisfactory and we are back with some basic new player guides and today we're going to set up 100% efficient early game Catherium manufacturing. So the goldy metal Catherium, you should have indeed found it if you followed my first video tips, check the playlist to check the previous ones, uh, to just collect all the stuff you can see. Uh, in that case, you should be able to access Catherium here. And then we can now basically unlock Catherium uh, Quickwire, which is a resource we can produce from Catherium. And if you don't have that, you'll need to uh, get some Catherium and do some, uh, well, research in the MAM of your port. And if you're new to this little uh, playlist or this little series, you should know that each video is kind of trying to be shorter than the previous one. And I kind of uh, would prefer that you watch the earlier videos bef before watching this one, because then there will be less comments to check in the description. Anyways, I've done some research in the man before, uh, and this basically means that I have been able to unlock the rebar gun and that's over at uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. alien organisms and the rebar gun is uh, really handy because with this thing we can actually shoot things from afar and deal damage and it's super handy so do all the research you can in the mam make sure to do some research and search around and if you find a hard drive you might get some really valuable uh, other recipes in any case, um, this happens to be a pure Catherium or source. Um, if you don't have a pure source, you can go to another source. But this little video, I'm going to show you how to basically set it up efficiently. And one thing we definitely want to unlock is, of course, the zip line. Because with this thing, we can travel with, uh, well, on the power lines. And that's super handy if we can travel on the power lines. That's basically this game's first uh, long range transportation. Uh, so, in any case, to set this thing up, we will need some Catherium ore as a source. And we are going to set up a miner. And you might be wondering uh, when we set up this miner, do we need a pure source? No, you do not need a pure source. You can add a medium source and then you can go with some power shards and uh, overclock it so it produces the uh, amount we do would want. So a normal source will produce 60. This one, uh, this one produces uh, 120. And to do this setup, we actually want to produce 108 per minute. So because I have a pure source, I get to underclock this thing a little bit, which would make it a little bit more uh, efficient. In any case, uh, we will have 108 per minute. And why is this? Well, let's spawn a couple of smelters and you'll see. So, here we have a smelter. We select the Catherium ingot to smelt here and we need 45 per minute in order to produce 15 Catherium ingots per minute. So we need quite a lot to produce a few ingots. Now, uh, now is the time we are going to underclock this thing. Yes, we're going to underclock it to, uh, to produce 12 per minute. And that is only because if we do this, we can directly hook up a couple of constructors to each of these. Inside the constructor, we just unlocked quick wire and they require 12 per minute. And here you can see this thing produces 12 per minute it will when we have updated the settings and now this one will take in 12 per minute very handy so this type of setup will be completely balanced so we're going to add a couple of more of these we can see the input is uh, when we have updated it only so don't be confused by the early types of uh, stats going on there and if you want to update the stats and just get going a little bit here on site, 
we can add a couple of temporary biomass burners because we didn't bring our electricity with us here. And there we go. We are now burning some fuel. And this thing is producing Catherium ore, very nice. And now if we go into this thing and insert some Catherium ore because we didn't connect them, we can see it needs 36 per minute. 36 times 3 is indeed 108. And if you go into this thing, we set it up to quick wire and we see it requires 12 per minute, 12 per minute, produces 60 per minute. This one will produce 60 per minute and 60 per minute. And this will be, of course, a total of uh, 180 per minute, which uh, is more than one uh, Mark II belt. So that's over our capacity. One thing you could do if you wanted to bring all to the base is to set it up that you will uh, transport the ingots to your base at one belt and then do the quick, uh, the quick wire at home. But for this type of setup, we will bring 120 quick wire um, with us and we're going to set up an awesome sink here to uh, sink the rest of the quick wire right here at site. Because we will be uh, going back here and upgrade this facility later when we have something like Mark III belts and such. And there we go, we can unlock the zip line. Very nice. Which we can equip, and if we do that, we can ride power lines. Very handy. Right, so here we are. We have set up this uh, production, and we produce 180 quick wire per minute. And of course, we can't transport this amount, no. But we are quite efficient. We are indeed 100% efficient. But to lead away some of that, we're going to use this thing, the awesome sink. And you can see I did prepare this thing to be set up in a way that we can, well, basically set it up later in order to do produce things the um, well, speed we do want to later when we got some better materials. But right now, we're just going to bypass this little first thing. And if you remember my earlier tip, we need to click R in order to re revert that thing. Connect this up. So now we have this machine and this machine. That's 120 per minute, which is the max speed. And then we're going to have the rest of them. Which will go directly to the awesome sink we connected up there. So 60 per minute into the awesome sink and 120 back to base. Right, so with this little zip line rider, we can safely run, ride across zip lines like this. It's very scary, uh, but in order for it to work, you can see this kind of abyss here. You cannot really ride them safely they kind of mess up when you try to jump up like that. You actually have to run out and take a leap of fate. So when running, <laughs> when using the zip liner, you'll have to take a lot of uh, leaps of fate. So just so you know that, it, it's gonna be scary. Well, that's basically some efficient Catherium wire production for you. And um, we have uh, brought the electricity from home base here. We are going to put the Catherium ore into some valuable production at another place. Because we found a new area where we can uh, have some copper. Because nearby here there are no new copper sources. So it doesn't make any sense to bring the Catherium here. And that is because one of the most important components components we can use Catherium for is uh, combining it with copper sheets, which will be coming up in a future uh, tutorial. Whoops, now I wasted a parachute. So, uh, research away at a MAM and uh, I'll be seeing you next time when we will be looking at some good old... Oh lords, that's scary. Uh, Excuse me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is scary. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. This is how to produce some Catherium quick wire. Quick wire. 
100% efficient production here. So we have 120 production going to our other manufacturing facility and we go with 60 right into this little awesome sink before we get Mark 3 belts. If you have Mark 3 belts already, well then you can just uh, funnel everything to uh, the production you might have. In any case, thanks a lot for watching. I hope I will be seeing you in the next episode. This is your host, Jim Desmer, signing out.